welcome back to our channel. This week we're going to be talking all about expatriate allowances. What are they? Who are they for? How much are they? When do they get paid? We'll be answering all those questions and more in today's video. So we've gotten a few questions on what are expat allowances and so we wanted to just share a little bit of information on what they are. Yeah, disclaimer, this is from our point of view. This is our experience. So of course, different companies are going to have different allowances. It's going to vary maybe by what job you hold in the company, but we just wanted to give you our point of view, what we've experienced as American expats going overseas for a large multinational company. So we have been expats now for six and a half years. So we have the personal side of actually receiving the allowances. And then I also worked in human resources for a large company and I worked a lot with sending expats overseas. So I also have kind of the professional, more corporate side of understanding the allowances and just what the purpose is for the expats receiving them. I think the reason we've had some questions about what the expatriate allowances are on expat assignments, because there's definitely rumors out there where people know that going on expat assignment can be financially lucrative. And so people are always wondering, where does that money come from? How do you make money when you go on expat assignment? So we really just wanted to kind of break it down for you so you could see the different areas where the company usually does give you some extra money because you've taken on a hardship and you're moving away from your home, kind of everything you've ever known. You're going to a different culture, a different country for the company. And they definitely want to give you some financial compensation for taking on that role. So the first incentive that you'll receive is a salary uplift. And so this is just basically a calculated value a percentage of your salary, let's say 10%, that the company will give you in addition to your base salary. And this 10% will not be taxed, so it's tax protected. And so the uplift on your salary is paid out every regular paycheck period, so it's you receive it on a continuous basis. Yeah, and it will depend, the amount of uplift you get will depend on where you're going. So if you're going, let's just again take it from an American point of view, if you're going to London for an assignment for a two-year job, your uplift's not going to be very high. It might be 10, 15%, maybe even 5%. Um, but if you're going to go to, let's say, Bangladesh or Africa, you're going to be getting a much higher uplift, maybe 60, 70, 75% of your salary. So the amount of your uplift is really going to depend on obviously your salary, but then also where you're going on expat assignment. How hard is it there? How different is it from the culture that you're used to? So the next uplift that you usually receive, the spousal allowance, and that's just basically a payment that the company gives the employee because they recognize that the employee's spouse is having to leave his or her career behind, so to speak, and travel to this new country for their spouse. And so they definitely want to give you some kind of compensation. It's not really, it's not meant to replace your income by any means, but it's meant to help you maybe keep up your certifications or to help you on your job search when you arrive in your new country or maybe taking some webinars or classes online. It's really, that money is meant to go towards those things to help your spouse's career. And the spouse allowance is typically just a one lump sum that's paid in January each year. And so another allowance that it's typically given is a cost of living increase, basically covering the increase in cost of your typical goods in your new home country. For our instance, it gets updated, I wanna say every six months, they'll send out a survey, you let them know where you're doing your shopping, what restaurants you're eating at, things like that. Based on their research uh, from a third party, they will make an adjustment what your allowance would be. And again, it's very dependent on where you go, like everything else. So if you're an American and you go to a place with a lower cost of living, you probably wouldn't get this. In Angola, for example, the cost of groceries were much higher there, um, where expats typically shop, than compared to groceries back in Houston. So they give you a little extra money in each paycheck because they recognize that the cost of living is X amount higher and they don't want you to have to take that out of your paycheck to be able to live there. And so this is also included on your regular paycheck. So this comes in uh, on a regular basis as well. Another uplift that you get being an expat usually is a vacation allowance. If you are in a more hardship location, the company usually wants to give you extra money to take a vacation and actually extra days as well. When we lived in Luanda, Angola, we received this allowance 
And then we also got two extra weeks of vacation because they recognize how hard it is to live there. And they want you to be able to go on vacation to recharge and they don't want vacation days or the cost of a vacation to hinder that. And depending on where you're located, if you're in a more hardship location, you might get more weeks or more days compared to if you're in a less hardship location. Maybe you'll just get one extra week of vacation or again, no extra days of vacation. So speaking of vacation allowance and vacation days. We found that living overseas, not only do we have more vacation days, but there's also way more holidays in the countries we've been in compared to the US. I think back home, we would get nine to 10 official holidays per year. Here in Argentina, it's probably almost double that. So that's been an added bonus. Um, you're almost talking about a week or two weeks more of holidays per year which has really helped us out on traveling and enjoying our expat life more. So while we don't have children of our own, we're still familiar with the benefits that families receive as well. And one of the biggest benefits is schooling being paid for overseas. So again, the company recognizes that you're uprooting your family to go on an overseas assignment for them and they wanna take care of your children's schooling. So typically the company will help get your children into the international schools. That's a huge financial benefit for the parents because those schools overseas are definitely really expensive. And it's also great for the kids because they can make friends with other expat children from around the world. And if you have a college student, usually we found at least with our company, they give you an allowance twice a year to have your college student fly wherever they're going to college. So again, let's just say the US, they will fly that student from the US to wherever your expat location is twice a year. So that's a really good benefit. You know, if they're away at college, they can still come and visit you in your host country. And while it's not super common for American expats to do this, I have seen a lot of European expats take advantage of the companies that will pay for boarding school. So they, you know, let's say if they're in Africa, they will actually leave their child in France or the UK or Switzerland at a boarding school, and then they will come down for the summers or holidays to stay with their family. And normally those boarding schools are quite expensive, so it's definitely another good financial incentive. So another allowance you'll receive is a housing allowance. Now this will be different from company to company, and it will also depend on the location you're going to. You will typically be given either a house by your company, or they'll set you up in housing, or for our instance here in Argentina, they'll give you a, a monetary allowance and with that, you're responsible for going and finding your own housing, your own apartment. In Angola, like he said, they gave us an allowance, but then they also took away a certain amount each month. So let's just say they gave us $5,000, but they also took away 3,000, and that was meant to cover our housing because we were in compound housing there. So housing that the company had chosen for us. But then here in Argentina, like he said, they gave us a certain amount, let's say again, 5,000, and we're just responsible for finding our own housing. So you can find an apartment that costs $5,000 a month to rent, or you can try and find an apartment that costs $2,000 a month and keep that $3,000 in your pocket. But really this allowance isn't meant for you to make a profit. It's really meant for you to have good, solid, safe housing wherever you're living. And while $5,000 might sound like a lot of money, the company does know that the cost of living of your new location and they, try and make it equivalent to what you would be expecting to pay from your previous location. And one of the last benefits that you'll get as part of your allowance package is usually the company, depending on where you're going, will give you an allowance for language lessons. Uh, they might be you're taking them in the office or you can take them at home or use them for going to a language school. They give you these lessons to help you try and assimilate with the new culture. Yeah, that's definitely a great one to take advantage of that some people don't always think about. Well guys, to sum it up, here are the allowances that we talked about that you might receive when you go on your expat assignment. You will usually have a salary uplift, maybe a spousal support allowance, a cost of living supplement, some kind of vacation allowance, extra vacation days, potentially extra holidays in your host country, and educational things such as international schools paid for, an allowance for your college student to come visit you, boarding school paid for, or even language learning. If you guys have learned something today, definitely go below and give us a like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to be hitting you with more expat content for the next couple of weeks. And if you're a current expat or you're thinking about going on expat assignment, 
Let us know in the comments if you have any specific questions. We'd love to make a video tailored to what you guys are interested in hearing. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you guys next week. Yep. Bye. Bye.